Today we're gonna look at a macro lens made by Canon that has some special features like LEDs and a thing called Super Macro. It's the Canon EFM 28mm f3.5 Macro IS STM and we're gonna learn 15 things about it. Let's begin with the first one. What's on the lens? The attention grabber is the white ring, that's where the LEDs are, but more on those later. We have the focusing ring that turns very smoothly. It seems that it was made to handle some precise manual focusing, has a good premium feeling to it. Underneath it is the control ring. To use it, we must pull the switch up and rotate. Now the lens is in the normal shooting mode, indicated by the first line. Twist the ring again and we get the super macro mode. Printed, we have the minimum focusing distance, the button that allows turning the LEDs on and off, and the fact that the lens has image stabilization. On the back, we see a plastic mount without a weather sealing gasket. Feels good. Now, let's see the size and weight. To better see its size, I placed it next to two other lenses. Retracted, it's just a bit bigger than the 15 to 45 mm kit lens. This is how it looks unretracted. It's small enough to occupy less space in the camera bag, but big enough for good, easy handling. Now, the weight, it has only 129 grams. Third thing, focal length. 28mm is unusual for a macro lens. They usually have a more narrow field of view, but this is what makes it special. Being a wider macro lens, you can show the bigger picture while focusing very close. Here is a photo with a 60mm macro lens and now with our 28mm macro lens. Here is the 60 again and now the 28. I really prefer the wider view on these shots. It is a good choice for product photography as you can see in these examples where my subject was a GoPro. 28mm on an APS-C sensor is the full frame equivalent of 45mm, so this lens can be very useful for street photography or for portraits. There will be an episode with more photos made with this lens, as soon as it's finished you will find the link in the description of this video. Fourth, Compatibilities this lens will not work on DSLRs, it was made only for Canon's EOS M cameras, like the Canon M100, M6 or the M50. Fifth, Maximum and minimum aperture values and the number of blades. The lens can close the aperture at a maximum value of f22 and it has 7 blades and they are rounded. The minimum aperture value is at f3.5 that won't let in a lot of light, but it's not too bad. It's much better than f4.5, what you would get with the kit lens at the same 28mm. Sixth, focusing. The minimum distance at which this lens can focus is at 9.3 cm away from the sensor, which is close to just 1.5 cm in front of the lens. Manual focusing can be made with a lot of precision thanks to this focusing ring that turns very smoothly and it's very responsive. Now let's see the autofocus. At normal distances, this lens focuses fast, as you can see in this video. When the camera is not recording video and we use it strictly for photography, focusing is blazing fast. It's also accurate. Sometimes it does have the tendency to focus hunt, especially in low light, but overall the results are good. Usually macro lenses are a bit slower at focusing, but this one you can use it all the time and get fast results. Seventh, Image Stabilization This lens has a very effective image stabilizer that will be very useful for handheld photography. Here it is, turned off and now we turn it on. It works silently and it does the job very well. We cannot say the same thing about the close-up footage, where camera shake is more pronounced due to the magnification. With the image stabilization now turned on, we see that it's helping but not too much, just a bit. 8. 
super macro mode and retractable design. This lens has three modes, the super macro mode, the normal shooting mode and retracted. Retracted, the lens cannot be used. This mode just makes the lens occupy less space. In the normal shooting mode, the lens acts as a normal macro lens with a 1 to 1 magnification ratio, which means that it's a true macro lens. The subject that was photographed has the same size in the image as if it was sitting directly on the sensor. In the normal shooting mode, the lens can focus close and go all the way to infinity. In super macro mode, the lens will not be able to focus to infinity. But you will be able to get a bit closer to the subject, enlarging it by 1.2 times. This is a photo made using normal mode and this is super macro mode with the 1.2x magnification. An interesting feature, but there is still one more. Let's see the LED lights. By pressing the button once, the LEDs are turned on at full power. Press it again for 50% less power. With a long press, we can make them work only on the left side or on the right side. The LEDs are effective only at close range. Here is a photo with the LEDs off and now on. The lights will not be the best choice on shiny or metallic surfaces. But when the subject is non-reflective, the LEDs act as a good fill light, as you can see here. So yeah, this feature makes quite a big difference. Just keep in mind that they will drain the battery a bit if they stay on for too long. 10th, special accessories. There is a special lens cap that comes with this macro lens. It was made to hold on to the tiny front element. No other lens caps will work on this lens, so be careful not to lose it. The filter thread size is not indicated on the top side of the lens where we usually see it, but it's indicated on this tiny lens hood that comes in the box. The lens hood will also be our filter holder. Just keep in mind that the LEDs will be blocked when the lens hood is attached. Now let's move to image quality tests. Let's see the sharpness. At f3.5, the middle of the image is nice and sharp. The contrast is average. Moving now in the corner of the image, where the result is not bad. A bit of softness, but a decent result. Getting better now at f4. Very good sharpness and resolution now at f5.6. Even a bit better at f8. Not a big difference at f11 and at f16. The effect of diffraction is starting to soften the image. Let's now see distortion and vignetting. A good performance, almost no distortion coming out of this lens. There is just a tiny amount of pincushion distortion, but barely noticeable, so a good result here. Vignetting though at f3.5 is quite heavy. If we turn on peripheral illumination, vignetting goes away or if we close down to f5.6. Moving to bright light performance. This is a challenging test for all macro lenses, but this one performs quite well. There isn't too much flaring and this probably happens because of the tiny glass elements of this 28mm lens. Moving to close-up image quality. We are now in super macro mode, photographing a graph paper. At f3.5, the depth of field is very small. Here is where I focused, and we see very good sharpness. At f5.6, we have perfect sharpness. Almost the same at f8. Softness will start to creep in now at f11 due to diffraction. At f16, the image is soft, and at f22, it's too soft. Finally, bokeh. There is not too much bokeh at normal distances, but still, this lens has the full frame equivalent of 45mm. So, if you get closer to the subject, those backgrounds will look nice and soft. When you get very close, the background completely disappears. Overall, this is a good macro lens. 
It's easy to handle, it's very enjoyable and has solid image quality. Maybe it's not great for photographing insects because with 28 mm you have to get really close and that would scare them off. But it's great for product photography, for photographing objects in general. Thanks to its fast focus and versatile focal length, it can be very useful on the streets as well. All of these being said, the Canon EFM 28mm macro comes recommended. If this video was useful, please press that like button and see you next time.